Hello, in this video I'm going to be building a digitally controlled variable resistor. At least that's my intention. Well, okay, so far so boring. Uh, but I actually came across this challenge while I was building this synth, which is nowhere near finished, but is basically the reason why I haven't uploaded videos for ages. This may be something for synth builders, um, but you may be able to imagine why charging a capacitor with a constant current but being able to vary that current digitally might be useful in terms of synths. Normally capacitors will draw different amounts of current depending on how much charge that capacitor has already taken on. So you get a kind of curvy line. Um, but again, you can imagine how making the current constant might affect that kind of graph of voltage over time for the capacitor. I'm going to be experimenting with two different ways of doing that. I'm going to base it on an Arduino and this thing here, this is an R slash 2R digital to analog converter which you can attach to an Arduino using one port, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I'm not going to go into how this is built in this video. I covered this a little bit in my last one and there's a lot of interesting resources that explain exactly how this works. But essentially what this does is transform one byte into a corresponding voltage value. So for instance 255 would be 5 volts and 0 would be 0. Um, My plan is to build this digital variable resistor um, with this method. There's the Arduino, there's the R slash 2R digital to analog converter. The next stage is what I'm going to be experimenting with. Um, essentially, I'm going to either use a JFET or an LED and LDR combination uh, to vary a resistance using the voltage from the DAC. The LDR that I have is called GL5528. It's probably not particularly important the, the specific part number. These are very common specs for an LDR. When it's light the resistance varies between 10 to 20 kilo ohms and when it's dark the resistance is 1 mega ohm. Um, the peak sensitivity, I think this is very common for LDRs which are cadmium sulfide based, is 540 nanometers which is green essentially so I would do best to use a green LED. The disadvantages with this approach as I said um, are that the response time is likely to be fairly bad and also it's not going to be linear but what I was hoping to do was possibly to be able to com compensate for that with the Arduino if I calibrate it to specific resistances. JFETs are... I don't really know that much about them either um, but they seem to be very interesting components. Um, junction field effect transistor I believe it stands for. This is the 2N5486 um, and I was reading a data sheet which reckons that it should be able to vary its resistance between 100 to 600 ohms in the ohmic region of its performance. So the ohmic region of the JFET is when the amount of current it passes varies with voltage. I can see from this graph that this is not necessarily going to be a linear pr um, process either. So I just built a simple circuit on this breadboard with my Arduino Pro Mini. Um, this variable resistor is being used as a voltage divider. That's just to allow me to control the value of a byte within the Arduino. Obviously this is not a, a practical application of this circuit because you wouldn't bother varying a resistance using a variable resistor as your control. This is literally just so that I can vary the value of a byte. 
inside the Arduino. I've connected my digital to analog converter up to this port here. On the Arduino Pro Mini, this is port D, and it actually includes the TX and RX pins. Um, I've never found any problem with using the TX and RX pins as outputs in this manner. Um, but don't blame me if you do it and you find yourself unable to access the Arduino. This is my simple program, um, just a testing program. All I'm doing is setting port D out. I could do this with port manipulation as well, but uh, I just find this more straightforward actually. Reading the analog zero pin, um, shifting that two bits to the right to give me a zero to 255 value, and then setting port D to that value. And then this bit, I'm just turning serial on and outputting the value to the computer. You see if I open the serial monitor and then start changing the value of the variable resistor, the value of that byte changes. Obviously this is a bit dumb to be using a variable resistor to digitally control resistance, but this is just a control device. Obviously the value of that byte could be controlled by any part of your Arduino program. Um, I've already proved to myself that the output of this DAC in terms of the voltage here is linear, so I'm not going to bother doing that again. I, I switched over to experimenting with the PMP transistor, which incidentally is the BC558, which is the PNP counterpart of the BC548 MPN transistor. I switched over to experimenting with this because I realized that the JFET that I was going to use for this uh, this purpose essentially does the same job as in it's not necessarily exactly a variable resistor uh, it just varies the current available on the V out at least that's my understanding of this document here um, the, the JFET has a lot of disadvantages. It needs a power. It needs the control voltage to be negative, or to be reverse biased relative to the voltage that you're controlling, um, which involves using an op amp. The JFET is also not as commonly available as these. These are extremely cheap and common components. I'm probably going to get somebody complaining that I used this incorrectly or that I'm going to damage it or something in the circuit that I used it but I have to say I haven't seen any damage or odd things happening yet. I drafted the PMP circuit on Circuit Lab. it's just a partial circuit diagram not including the Arduino or the DAC this is just the output from the DAC which feeds into the base of the transistor and also we have this diode connected from plus volts to the base of the transistor. Obviously this is not a battery either, it's pretty much just running on USB power, but that's just to illustrate that this is running on 5 volts approximately. And this is the load, 15k resistor, but that could have been anything. I basically just wanted something where I could tap in right there and measure the current passing through the transistor and out into the load. It's not that easy to see because I have wires attached to the end of these probes but essentially I have the multimeter connected at the positive end to the PMP transistor and the negative end just connected to the 15k resistor. The byte value for the DAC is set at 255 now and we have zero current running through this resistor here. As I twist the resistor all towards zero, the current reaches 30 milliamps. I think the transistor saturates at some point. So what I'm going to do now is map these values from the byte going to the DAC to the current flowing from the PMP transistor. That will tell me if the output is linear 
um, and what sort of range I've actually achieved here. So there's my graph of current against the value of the byte. So the value of the bytes along the bottom, 0 to 255, which corresponds to a voltage um, coming through the DAC. But the actual voltage is unimportant because we're interested in current, of course. And up here we have 31 milliamps, which is the maximum, which remain the same until you get to approximately like 180 on the byte value and then we have this roughly linear region it probably is linear it may be just my measurements or my something about my method which makes it seem slightly curved and then that linear region finishes at about 225 on the DAC I don't really know for sure, but this is probably something to do with the transistor saturating at some point and turning off at some point. Um, if I was going to guess, I would say this is saturated and this is off. As you can see, I didn't bother measuring every single value. I just picked the most interesting region to measure. This here is the LM13700 in an application as a voltage controlled resistor. This is also a single ended current source uh, just like the one that I made with the PNP transistor except again uh, it's an IC the wiring around it is a lot more complex than the one that I just did. The circuit supporting the IC uh, is also a lot more complex than the one uh, than the PMP transistor circuit that I just experimented with. This is my second digital variable resistor of sorts. Um, that's just the output from the DAC again, going through a 68 ohm resistor to prevent overcurrent in the LED, um, and there's the green LED. There's the LDR. This is about 1 mega ohms in the dark uh, through to about 500 ohms in the light. So I'm adding a green LED to my DAC um, so I can start experimenting with the LDR version of a variable resistor, which is a true double ended variable resistance. The green ones can take a maximum voltage of 3.4 volts. So I'm going for the maximum, just so I get the maximum range of brightness. And the forward current should be 20 milliamps. So that means, that tells me I need a 68 ohm resistor. This is an extremely useful website. I could do the math to work these things out, but this is a lot easier than that. So there's my 68 ohm resistor and my ultra bright green LED. I'm just varying the uh, just varying the byte value here, and as you can see, the brightness of the LED is changing. This is obviously quite a rough setup I have here. There's my LDR. I've just bent the leads so that it's pretty much touching the LED and facing in the same direction. These two wires are the wires from my multimeter. I'm just going to plug those into the LDR so I can see the change in resistance. And now I'm going to get some tape and wrap around here so that external light doesn't affect the readings. Um, if I was actually going to make if I was going to use this in a project, I would probably 3D print an enclosure for these to make it so that the angle remains consistent between the two components uh, and also to block any further light. But just for now, I think electrical tape is going to do fine. It's time for a bunch of electrical tape. So you can see 
literally nothing happening with this LED now because it's uh, wrapped up but you just have to take my word for it that it's varying its brightness as I twist this potentiometer here. I'm going to make a graph of the values that I can get out of, out of here. So now I've finished twiddling the dial and getting readings I can see something quite interesting. Um, there is a fairly linear region here so there is like a very non-linear bit as well but I reckon that between this point and this point you could fudge this into a fairly linear digital variable resistor. So in conclusion um, the range of values that you can get out of this incredibly simple combination of LED and LDR is actually pretty amazing. Um, you can vary from 500 to 15,000 ohms pretty much. The disadvantage is, is these LDRs are usually not made very consistently so you'd probably have to calibrate each one before putting it in your circuit. Also they're quite slow to respond um, so it's nowhere near fast enough to for instance use it in an audio application at least not dealing with audio frequencies it would really lag behind uh, the DAC um, and also it's not linear but those things can be overcome because this is such a cheap robust component it's probably virtually impossible to destroy it it can take about 150 volts um, and it's by far the cheapest option so I'm sure there's some applications where you can overcome the shortcomings and this can be a very good digital variable resistor so I hope you found that interesting just an overview of two simple circuits where you can either vary current digitally or truly vary a resistance I'm fairly new to analog electronics myself and certainly this question how do I vary current or resistance using voltage it was one of the first things that cropped up. Um, so I hope I've gone some way to answering that question for you. Um, and I've also covered some more complex options such as JFETs and the LM13700, uh, which you can use to achieve some of the same goals. Anyway, if you did like that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of this sort of thing, synths, open source electronics, CNC machines, various gadgets and strange stuff, then please do subscribe and hopefully see you next time.